Hello, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Is the microphone actually working? It is working. Hey, isn't that exciting? Exciting times to be had. Uh, yep, all's good there. And we are going to embark on a little bit of what I'm calling mopping up in Rise of the Tomb Raider. We're, we're, we're approaching the end uh, the end, the the end game of the uh, of the story, and I just wanted to get a wee bit more done in terms of progress and <clears throat> challenges and achievements and collectibles, etc. Before we actually commit to that, so um, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Gosh darn it! Uh, <laughs> uh, pop, 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 pop! Ah, come on now. Why aren't you plugged in? There we go. You'd think I'd never... You'd think I'd never... use this controller before. There we go. Continue! So between you, me, and the fence post, I've done a little bit of this already. I did uh, a touch, and I was thinking, well, it's going to be really boring, so I'll just do it in between streams. But actually, it's it's kind of interesting. So um, why not? Why not? Maybe for an hour or so on this Sunday evening after a... Uh, after a hard weekend of DIY, a good weekend of DIY, lots of sanding. Oh wow, this is taking a while to load, isn't it? There we go. There we go. Okay. Right, so we're back. That's right. Yes, I took it. Took us back, back to the beginning of all things. Because uh, there's some stuff in this map area that we are yet to do. Uh, there's a relic to get. There's a document to get. And that is it. Okay, it looks like these things are in are in caves. So let's just head, first of all, down to this, this cave. Back this way. Just move the mic a little bit. There we go. And the cave is down here, I think. No, that's the um Ah, the cave is further along. That's that's something else that they had to open up uh, to get a collectible. Chuck a radio get to get their attention. Whose radio is that? Who's missing their radio? Well, three out of four ain't bad. And there we go. The gameplay is almost disturbingly satisfying, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, here we go. This is an entrance to the cave. And we couldn't have got through earlier because we didn't have a shotgun. There we go. What's going to be down here, I wonder? Relic? Mongolian tug. A banner of sorts to be affixed to a spear. This one looks like it's seen some violence. It does, doesn't it? Mm. Again, the artifacts in these games, I really like them. I like Lara's explanation to herself and to us, the, the, uh, the observers, as to what it is that she's looking at. It looks like actually a folded up... Um, 
part of a yurt, maybe. Uh, the curved beams making a Mongolian tent. Perhaps. 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 Oh, was that a thing on the wall? Perhaps. Do 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 do. There we go. Got some precious crafting materials. Precious. So now he's got to the north of this map over here. And there's something else I haven't been actually making use of during the um could just mark the map anywhere. No. What? Isn't that strange? Maybe because I'm not actually in the map, I'm in the cave. Hang on. Something I wasn't making use of in the in the main game uh, gameplay up to now is actually the ability to toggle location. What? <laughs> Why can I not mark things? Oh, because they're not technically waypoints. Oh, okay, right. Well, ah, okay. Well, just for demonstration purposes, if I toggle the feathers here, cook, then you can actually use Lara's sort of survival vision to locate things in the landscape. It's very handy. And uh, a little bit like blocking, I completely forgot that I can do such things. But it makes for more, a more, a more gritty, realistic experience. Not knowing that you can do such things. Right, cave entrance over here. Good evening, Charmana. Good evening. How are things going with you? Where's the cave? Down here, presumably. Yeah. You won't. Aha. Mushrooms. And then in here, I think we're going to find a document, apparently. Along with a fallen warrior. Oh. A fallen. Is this a. It's almost like a miner. Some hmm, okay, let's see what it has to say. He's passed through the lands of the Rus. I cannot shake the feeling that he's taunting me, waiting until I'm a day's ride away before moving on. I will not be home before the winter as I hoped. Uh -huh. I've stopped at a small village by a glassy lake they called Svetloyar. The prophet spoke here, and now the villagers refuse me lodging. I slept on the banks of the lake. Where a young man bearing a crude version prophet's icon tried to kill me as I dozed. Cracky. I made an example of him, and now the people fix me with the evil eye, spit at me as I pass. I must move on. Well, soon. that's what happens when you kill locals. Sickness spreads. What'd you expect? Uh, typing the last bits of code into a home assistant to detect if I'm streaming on Twitch or not. Wow. You'll know after a quick reboot. Well, that's cool. I'm trying desperately not to um, not to worry too much about the uh, the fledgling um, sparrow outside on our patio. He's uh, well, I don't know. It's a he, but I'll call him. A he. I'll call him he. Uh, he spent the day um, hiding behind a plant pot and um, we've given him access to water and seeds. I'm pretty sure that his, uh, probably his parents, certainly other birds, know he's there and they've been feeding him throughout the day. Um, but he can't, seemingly can't yet fly, he can't yet fly away or to safety or indeed looking at the ground in this game at the moment. Um, fly to uh, fly to uh, get out of the cold. To be fair, I've been using they all all day actually for the most part. So I was very careful when I, I talked about it on um, talked about it on uh, social media earlier, um, just to talk about the bird and they. 
but the little guy, I am, I am concerned about him. Problem is, if I didn't know he was there, I wouldn't know he was there. I know that makes that makes that's a statement of the of the obvious, um, but you know this is how this happens every night. It happens up and down the country. It happens all around the world. Um, juvenile animals sometimes fall into precarious situations. Heck, juvenile juvenile humans fall into precarious situations. So, uh, you know, and he wouldn't. Fa it, it, they wouldn't thank me if I was to uh, bring them indoors or put them in a, an artificial situation. If there are family still around who are looking looking after him, looking after them, um, they wouldn't. They would get. They'd be distressed and confused. They'd wonder what's going on, and they may not even like him coming back. You know, if they'd spent too much time in in a human house. The smells and all that, all that kind of thing. So you cannot do right for doing wrong, really. You cannot do wrong for doing right. But the thing is, it's just bothering me. <laughs> uh, no, what? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever happens won't be my fault. And yeah, it, it's um, yeah, it's not like it's going to stick around and be my, be my friend. Um, not that, not that I'm, ex I would, I'm expecting that, you know, do you know what I mean? But just the awareness, that's all. Thankfully, no cats have come across, come across it yet. So that's, that's something. Okay. Modified auto shotgun. Sounds good. On to our next location. Let's see what else we can we can mop up, shall we? So this area done one 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 three three six six three 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 three. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, okay. There's another big another area here. Relics and documents to be found. Let's go. The thing is, yesterday I res a rescue. Uh, I was aware of a snail that was on some rubbish that we were taking to the recycling centre on some garden rubbish, and uh, rather than leave them on the concrete, um, I actually put put the snail on my dashboard and carefully drove it <laughs> to safety, and then released it by a tree. And the thing is, it could be eaten by a bird by now. Who knows? Um, but I just, uh, I don't know. I just, I just, if I am aware of life in, um, in need of some sort of aid and it's not its fault and it's not trying to, to injure, harm or otherwise, uh, inconvenience me, I don't, I tend to be, I tend to be concerned for it, I guess, um. Right, so okay, documents up there. Okay, so on the shipwreck, that's what we've got. Cool. I missed some things on the shipwreck. Up we go. Ah, <sighs> so any joy with the uh, with the assistance? Okay. Documents. Something uh, must be down there. Don't roll off the edge, Lara. Good, good. Good, good. Oh, I ran straight past it. The Maria Dula is trapped. 
The ice gave way. Yeah. Her spine snapped in two. No matter. Well, I hope to wield her cannons against the false prophet. We will continue on foot. I have six of the Order of Trinity's best. Interesting. And we have been stockpiling food and supplies while the sailors starved. They do not know it yet, but they will give their life for the cause. My men and I will find our way out of these icy caves and continue on foot. Before the ship was swallowed by the ice to the south, we heard music. That will be our first stop. But first I must rest. The cold has sunk into my bones. And I am drowsy. Just, Just a little, a little sleep. sleep. I don't think he woke up. Turn on the lights and then there's... <laughs> Wow, that's quite a responsibility. Right, okay. Uh, now I want to head up there. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. So yes, tomorrow I have to, uh, I have a editing task I'd like to finish, and um, I'm a touch anxious about it for no good reason other than, you know, telling myself it's going to be much harder than it will actually be. Ah, so you could light up those lights. That's quite cool. But it's interesting how. Uh, how self uh, self sabotaging one can be. It's done. In terms of confidence, you know. We'll die here, thanks to Caraldus and the madness of the Order of Trinity. Uh huh. My ship will never see water again. We entered the glacial sea too far into the winter. Would have been turned back, but Caraldus would not abandon this lost prophet. He and his dead-eyed warriors seized control. He forced the ship through shallow tributaries until we could go no further. Then he made my crew construct sled runners, and the bastard forced us to tow the ship over land. It was death and excommunication to deny him. But it was death either way. I will make sure he dies here wow. with us. I've always kept a little poison at the ready in case the ship was taken. Now, it has another use. There you go. He fell to sleep. Soup Stream Notification Service. SSNS. The SNS. 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 Cool. So we've done that. Uh, we are done here. Are we? Are we? Ah, uh, okay. There's a relic there. And oh no, interesting. I missed the relic and the document back there. Okay, we can we can circle around and get it. Byzantine brooch. The enamel work is beautiful. This portrait has been defaced. It looks like it was depicting the prophet. They must have had to hide their faith. down here Whoa.
You need your soup. Exactly. Exactly. So, back through here. There's a wee cavern to the left. Just as we swim through here, I guess. But now with the rebreather, we can do this a little bit more leisurely. Even if it is ice water. Please, sir. Can I have some more? 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 A paisa. A sort of passport. Whoever held this spoke with the authority of the Mongol Empire. Mm. It reads, By the power of eternal heaven and order of the empire, whoever does not show respect will be guilty of an offense. Mm. Mongolian level one. Well. Wow. go through here and what are we aiming for the document all the way back there do you know what actually Nolan I've been meaning to say to you but obviously you're not on the discord so I couldn't tell you but um uh, easily uh, I can't get that that uh, zoo's recommendation out of my head with the car alarm. I just can't stop watching it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was a good recommendation. Ah. Aha. Up we go. Documents, where are you? Where are you? You're back this way. Where are you? Oh, you're down there. Interesting. Oh no! Ah, you're up here. Up oh, this little, at this other ice wall. Cunning. Man continues on. I, I do not know what drives him. We pass through frozen mountains at the edge of the world. The edge of the world. People are dying. Every day I pass graves or bodies left oh, along the faint trail. I have grown thin and hard, but I am close now. My my horse is dead. The mare that had been with me since the campaigns against the Bulgars. I butchered her and carried the meat on my back. But I am so... The voice acting I is really good. The emotional, the, the reticence there to the say, sound on the I butchered her, was fantastic. Our prophet will be dead within the week. And I will return to the Order of Trinity, triumphant. Just one more day, oh, and I will be upon, be upon him. him. Crikey. Oh, are there? That's really cool. I've been meaning to play... Uh, mm. Excuse me. I've been meaning to play and try out the... Um, uh, the educational software that came with that game. I, I have the game on PlayStation 4. Um, but there was a... Essentially, a version that was that was that was given, I think, given to schools for free, as a tool for exploring um, the Egyptian world. And uh, what? What? There was no bear back there. Why was there a bear noise? Um. Oh, the bear has, uh, the bear has spawned. 
Oh my goodness, that's horrifying. It is alive. Exactly, yeah, it's a learning tool, precisely, yeah. Right. I uh I don't need to I don't need to tackle the bear. I've done I've done that. That's so weird though, that the, the bear must have just been in the cave and I just ran past it. Cause I figured it was dead. That's why we've got the bear. Anyway, we need to get back to a camp in order to get to another camp on our mission. Uh, good evening, Cylon. Hin guys. Hin guys. Is this your uh, your Cylon programming betraying itself? It's not quite, not quite being human. I will say, Hin guys. The traditional human greeting. Oh, your Mr. Soup monitoring service is alive. Excellent. Excellent. Did I miss the sign in with your account goodness today? Uh, not sure. I, did, I posted on the, um, on the Discord, I think. Right, anyway, we're traveling, we're traveling. There we go. So that's one, three, four. <laughs> the link of the picture service of running now to get automated my home, scary. Yeah, I'm sure there's a camera somewhere in this room that surely can monitor me. Yeah, there's loads to get in the uh, in this area. So let's start. Let's start at the beginning. Well, that's true. There must be at least one camera in this room. Did I miss the sign-in with your account goodness today? I'm sorry. I, I'm, maybe I'm reading that wrong, but I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. Maybe I'm just bit. Maybe I'm being an idiot. Silent is 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 on uh, on repeat, but maybe it's because I uh, I'm missing point. Aha! You see, look. Uh, there is a bit of a yurt, so the the Mongolians were here at least. And uh, we will head. Although, was there anything? No, there wasn't. Phew! Nothing down there. And I seem to recall there's something back here. There might not be. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I've already got it. I do know that, uh, have I done the... I have, yes. I've done the... The treasure. The, uh, the, the tomb, isn't it? It's just there. You'd sell the code... To uh, for people to modify for their for their favourite streamers. Anything here? No. Okay. So everything everything else it is marked. It's just I've cleared out this area. So. so yes, just to reiterate, I'm on a mop-up uh, tour through 
areas of the game that I've already played in order to pick up things that I have not yet picked up so that towards the end game I'm in the, the be a better situation uh, or as best a situation as it would have been or could have been. Um, I've... Uh, I mean, this is more or less how I think how I played the game originally, actually, on the Xbox. Aha! Something over here. Nope, no, just a lamp. Just a lamp. There's a mural in here, though. Somewhere. Maybe higher up? Although, I'll pick up that scrap. He will text me directly. <laughs> right, dude. Hmm, an old Soviet plaque. Lenin lived. Lenin lives. Lenin will live forever. How's that working out for you? Uh, there's a document down. No, surely not down there. Wrong way. Come on now, document, where are you? Oh. Seems like you're sort of beyond that wall. Presumably I need to, oh right, okay, I need to slide across from there to there, that's fine. Onward. Oh, great. Didn't have time to uh, crack that open when we came through last time. Oh. It's funny, that fire looks a lot worse than it did from uh, down below. Also, look at the snow on, on Laura's hair. Just fantastic. Right. Nolan likes to communicate with uh, um, with icons. Although Nolan might appreciate my uh, my um, again. Had you been on Discord, you probably would have seen this actually today. Uh, my concern for a uh, a sparrow in the um, in the garden, basically an adoles adolescent who. Hasn't quite learned to fly, and um, they are being looked after by other birds. Presumably, their parents have, come, have been coming along through the day and dropping off grubs, etc. But now they've got to, they've got to get through the night, you know, hiding behind a plant pot in the garden. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, were we? Oh, sorry. I thought you were. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know you were there when uh, when I was talking about that. Sorry. Right. So there's a, apparently, there's a document right next to me. Oh, there. The Red Army finally uncovered the Temple of yeah. the Prophet's blessing. They have halted normal operations and are beginning to plunder the riches of our ancestors. We're ready. Working with the foreign prisoners, we've managed to hoard weapons and dynamite. When the Guardians are disturbed, right, I see, yes. we will use the chaos to revolt. The Red Army has been ruthless to us, but we will pay them back in kind. We will not stop until these invaders are, are dead. dead. Only then will our secret be safe. Fair enough. So... What next? Uh, mural. Ooh, what's that green thing? Oh, I've got to free the prisoners, of course. Yes. Ooh. I can do that on my way through. Right. So, mural. Mural. 
me a roll. Book. I want my book. Now, I don't think we got to explore here much. But I don't think there's anything here. I think there's just a mural on the right coming up, isn't there? Yeah, there we go. More Soviet propaganda. Night won't hey, from fluent in Russian. How do we get through? Oh, just climb over there. So that's that, and then there's an artifact just around to the right there. And to be fair, these um, this information only becomes available when you've found maps in the areas. So she has, uh, or, or rather I have as the player, le earned this knowledge. So it's not completely, um, you know, cheating. Someone's rosary. These beads have been worn away almost to nothing. A rosary in a, uh, well, in a gulag. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense, actually. <laughs> yep. So that's that. Uh, follow the path of the deathless herbs. Right, okay, so now we're going. Yeah, so when when we're done with this mop up, that's where we're going to. Because the path of the death of the deathless um, towards the end game, basically. You know what? I just spotted something for the first time back there. There's a there's a a downed piece of fence and what looks like a um a raft down there yeah and an old uh, campfire i don't think i've been here before this is a whole new area interesting so if I cut that rope, come on, let me cut the rope. What will this, what will this achieve? I wonder. Okay. Okay, I'll so bite. Cold. Intriguing. I don't think I've ever done that before in this game. That's quite cool. I mean, it was a minor thing to have achieved, but, you know, achievement it was nonetheless. Uh, so there's a coin cache to my left. Somewhere around here. Oh, is this a cave? Oh. It's a tomb, actually. I found a tomb to raid. Let the raiding begin. Wow, that guy got stabbed and is uh, laying where he fell. <laughs> raiding, raiding. It may be rapacious.
Down we go. I think this may actually end up being a two-stream um, exercise. So I may stream tomorrow as well, tomorrow evening, to uh, continue the mopping up before Tuesday, picking up with the story again. Oh. Damien, the Prophet's Forge. <laughs> Interesting. How is Laura not casting a shadow with the light stick behind her? She's a little bit. There's a very faint shadow there. Very faint. But it is there. Uh, is grave, out, grave robber not a direct a direct synonym for grave tomb raider? Not a catchy game title though, grave robber. No. No, you're right. Yeah. But uh, grave robber she is. I think uh, tomorrow after I've uh, done with this editing task, which once I've done, the other two that, that need to get done as well will follow very easily, I'm sure. Uh, I might treat myself to watching uh, Doctor Sleep, the, uh, the director's cut. I'm yet to watch it, and I am a tremendous fan of The, um, of the Shining, the Kubrick movie. And this is a sequel to that. But yes, I think I will sit down and watch it because I deliberately waited for the uh, for the Blu-ray to become somewhat affordable to me. And then uh, I think last year I finally got my hands on it, and I still haven't watched the thing. Um, you like it better than The Shining? Now that's interesting. And in that sense, I'm try I'm going to try and just appreciate it on its own merits. I, t I always try to, to sort of think about especially films, as to for what they've achieved um, as opposed to what they haven't done that I might have wanted, wanted them to do. But it's good that even so, that some people, and you're not the first person I've heard to have said this, uh, do like it more even than, than Kubrick's original, uh, Kubrick's masterpiece. Um, and I think in the words of Stephen King, um, uh, he considered the film to, to have taken what Kubrick did and given it a bit of warmth, a bit of life. Uh, and by the sounds of it, yeah, expanding the world a little bit. I suppose maybe being a little less afraid to actually touch on the uh, the mysticism, the magic of it, the uh, spiritualism or, or however one might describe it. Might describe it. The paranormal. Okay, cool. Found a tomb. I didn't. I didn't even know the tomb was there. That's just what I do. It's what I do, darling. It's what I do. So, yeah, monolith. Let's head up to the monolith, and then I'm gonna see if I can find those prisoners. Oh, I definitely will. I, we actually have a um, a thread on. Discord that is all about what we're currently watching. Often conversations follow. Um, to be fair, if I uh, if I could, I would drop more, almost all of my social media, apart from Instagram, because I, I do like sharing pictures and art and, and taking pictures. Um, Instagram and Discord. 
So if you were to join one, because Discord isn't isn't as broad as social media. It's not like Twitter where you're gonna have arguments with random people. Um, it's a it's a it's a commu it's a community that is always a server that represents a community that people have been invited to join. Excuse so, I me. Mean. So um, yeah. Yes, that's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, to track uh, track back as well. Yeah, excellent. So where is that? Must be one of these guys here. Let's go, to, go back for that one. There we go. Exactly, chosen server nerds. Um, but also, uh, you know, I, I think if people, if there's a, there's a, because, you know, I put the invite at the bottom of, um, of every video I put out. If someone is interested enough to click on it and want to join, then I think for the most part, they're going to be up for a conversation, up for a bit of a chat or some banter or just sharing some nerdy stuff. So, or some DIY, for example. I can't tell you how satisfying it is to have the uh, those worktops so so smooth. Right, so there's lots of stuff to clear up all around here, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go come and do this uh, this mission if I can. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it's kind of somewhere there-ish. Apparently, in the water. Maybe we have to get under the water somehow. Maybe that's the way. Something shining here. Where was it? Uh, I ha I have a database for my passwords, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Watching people's DIY is it is it's middle aged unboxing. I'm just about accepting that I'm approaching what I what I might consider to be middle age. You know, 37. I'm definitely not a not a not a tween. Um. And frankly, I think I've been essentially middle-aged for most of my life in terms of my my interests. Right, so is, is it across there, maybe? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to climb. We need to get up here. Oh, I see. You think the sickness... Heralded your. Uh... Oh, it's a it's a busted road. Ah. Heralded the end of your youth. Thirty-seven times two, seventy-four. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I am te I am in that sense middle-aged. Yeah. <laughs> ah. I mean, that's, that's, I don't think that's necessarily how people tend to use the term middle-aged, but it is mathematically correct. I am middle-aged. Embrace it, Mark. Embrace it. No, we need to be able to... Oh, that's how we get back. Okay, so we, we're just sliding down here. Cool. You're half dead. Oh, oh, don't be harsh on yourself. Half dead. Not at all. How on earth do we... Where are these prisoners, I wonder?
Can't see anything here. So it's almost like I'm just tracking a a route. Can I? I can, yeah. Yeah, the graphics are pretty cool, aren't they? Yeah. Quick, change the subject. <laughs> No, I think I think this game really does hold up very well, um, and as I say, maybe maybe I was just in the wrong mood when I when it came to playing the third game, and when we get there, it'll actually turn out to be to be a worthy successor to this one. You know, I'm hoping to reassess that, having played through the first and second in uh, in the build up to it. Right then, so we're we heading up here, Lara. Silent, silence. Good. Oh, that wasn't silent enough. Oh, ho, 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 ho. this new rifle. It goes bang. This must be where they took the prisoners. It goes bang. To be fair, though, I don't think I, you know. In that sense, I, I'm, I'm also must be some, somewhat middle-aged, in so much as I'm not. I don't want to be, you know, young, because um, that speaks to so much that I'm yet to know and learn and think about and and do. Or, for example, have the patience to, you know, to make a nice kitchen countertop. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna get you out of here. Yay. Can we cut can we cut them loose? There we go. All right, stay hidden and keep moving. We owe you our lives. Excellent. Well, um I'm not aiming to be up for much longer. Maybe Maybe just a few more minutes, so uh, so you'll get a chance to check soon. Because I do actually want to be up early and to get on with that work. Oh, look at that. Look at that mural. Look at that Soviet mural. Soviet mural. That is solid. That's solid referencing and research. I like it. Celebrating the technology and the, the bounty. You can see some people with sheaves of wheat there of the Soviet economic and social regime excellent your help is greatly appreciated we know these lands but there are fewer of us every season can I climb up there how do I get out of here there we go so unmistakable <laughs> unmistakable Oh, that's a dead Russian. Wow. It really is a dead Russian, just sitting there, frozen. Uh, uh. Oh, there's a strong box left for me. Ooh. I am intrigued. It triggers, except for the Alexa announcements, but can... You're gonna when I run some offline status, so I can assume it will work when you go offline. Okay. I'm so confused by the by the uni cuts y'all have been talking about. 
Is it just a political hammer? Uh, that's more subtle. Uh, uh, um, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, the, 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 so I, was just, I was just reading Charmanov's comment there. Um, the push for uh, for for-profit universities, real, realistically, has been here for a long time. It was one of the um, it was one of the uh, the 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 uh, side effects of uh, Tony Blair's government an agenda of um, getting. Uh, I think the goal was to get two thirds of the population through university, um, and that led to an increase in. Formal student loans, this, the sheer amount of money in that economy um, increased uh, and therefore uh, the amount that universities universities could charge. The cap keeps on changing and going up. Universities are being run as business and um, at the moment actually we're about to see a whole host of, uh, of academic staff go on strike from marking. Uh, I saw today a poll of... Uh, Durham University students, um, my 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 old university, where 68% of the students do not support this. Now that's unusual. Normally, students are um, very supportive of of direct action, um, but in this instance, I think they're getting a bit fed up of of, of inaction in the university, uh, leading to interruption for their teaching. Obviously, they've had COVID. I think there've been three, maybe four strikes over the past two years by academic staff. So academics are trying to, to push back against it, um, but it is absolutely rife for corruption. Um, chancellors at universities, so the people who run technically, I suppose, the, the agenda for the university, the vision, uh, they have been, for example, at Durham University, I, I'll, I'll, use, I'll use my uni as an example because I'm familiar with it um, and with the, the political, uh, inferences of some of this stuff um one of the former chancellors i think the previous one to this one was um actively pointing out how much money for example harvard raises from its former students and uh, and how you know we should be doing quote we should be doing similar um the, the ability yeah the idea of offering people the ability to name buildings after themselves if they donate half a million pounds or something you know this kind of thing um, and all of that is leading to, to a situation which, much like a corporation, um, the finances of the university can be manipulated to steer an agenda. So, for example, at um, places like Sheffield, uh, the, the business agenda is anti, has become anti-archaeology. Also, there's a political element there as well, um, because archaeology and anthropology... Uh, this current government doesn't, doesn't particularly like those things, like uh, you know cultural inquisitive inquisitiveness. Um, so the business argument is made that archaeology, for example, is not profitable. Uh, in, in Sheffield's case, it's fairly clear that what they did was they they looked at the books in a very particular way to prove um, that that was the case, um, and so. Uh, and so, therefore, as I say, much like a corporation, universities universities are becoming less more less about profit and more about being able to service debt and service ongoing growth. For example, at Durham University at the moment, there's a conversation about whether or not Durham should continue to expand its student housing offer. There's a very real risk that, that in such a small city, and realistically, it's a big town, Durham, in the northeast of England, just happens to have the Church of England's uh, second most important, third most important, possibly, uh, cathedral in it. Um, there's a very real risk that the, that the city will lose its local character if, we, if they just keep on getting more students in to get more money in, to get more... To, it, it becomes like a gang. You're feeding the need for growth as opposed to actually quality. Uh, and this, this is, this is a... a um, a trend across across the country, um, particularly at the quote unquote more prestigious universities, because they very quickly argue to have the cap on student um, funding uh, more or less, 
you know, uh, raised in, for special circumstances. Oxbridge were right at the top of, of arguing for that um, very early on. They were like, this isn't enough, we need more. So, um, and therefore, if you're just seeking to service debt and seeking to continue to grow, uh, questions about the quality of education come about, questions about, uh, from a marketing standpoint, you know, which, which, which courses are we going to, are we going to support? What does the, what do the focus groups say? You know, that kind of thing. It becomes a very cynical way of doing university. Um, oh, feel free to post a link. Yeah, go ahead. Very cynical way of doing university, um, but also as well, one that is, is easily, as you say, corrupted because when there's the, there's a moment, um, as there was last year when arts, uh, uh, arts, um, was it creative arts, arts and archaeology were on a list, if you might, you might recall, uh, to be defunded. Um, I think it was the Council for Students. I forgot what, exactly what it's called now, but basically universities get money that helps them deliver, um, uh, deliver practical uh, elements of their teaching. Um, so, for example, it helps them to afford lab-based teaching, this kind of thing. Well, in the case of archaeology, because archaeology was deemed not to be profitable, um, the then Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, was going to uh, cut funding, that element of funding, um, uh, for universities across the board, which led, which was basically the, the green light for places like Sheffield to enact what they'd always, what they've been wanting to do for a while, and that is shut down what they considered to be a non-profitable uh, department, or rather a department that they described as being non-profitable based on the economic case that they decided to make in the way that they made it. So, <laughs> so the irony is that the love of learning is being sucked out of uh, universities as a reason for going to universities. It's much more about um, the labour market directly. So uh, the government talks about um, strategic courses, uh, archaeology not being a strategic um, priority. Um, but that's also the perception of what the value of learning is. Is the value of learning simply to uh, to to add to the labour market in order directly in order to have a simple input output of uh, of finance, or should it be about, for example, you know. Uh, generating the next the next batch of experts who we're going to need for example i don't know help with massive civic engineering projects like uh like uh digging archaeological sites ahead of um a uh an ambitious uh railway that's covering half of england notably the wrong half in my opinion um who needs another railway going into london um so Oh, I went past... A, okay, I'll go back there. I'll go all the way back here. Um, so it's multifaceted. Uh, it is money. It is corruption. It is... Uh, it's also partly as well that lots of the management at universities tend to come directly from an academic background. So they're not actually good managers. And they've, they've abandoned their academic pursuits. So they end up being very highly paid... Um, figureheads who are at the at the at the mercy of consultation and um, an expensive consultation at that. So, for example, in Sheffield, there was someone who who came to the opinion that she did not like because she was a geography academic. Apparently, she did not like um, archaeology; didn't see the point of it, and therefore moved heaven and earth to make the case for shutting down that department ahead of, actually, the economic case being made. But then the economic case matched up with what she wanted to do. And that was her personal gripe based on her academic background and playing with aspects of, you know, the long-term the long -term growth of the university, if you want to call it that, or the, uh, you know, on a long enough timeline, the viability of, of any institution, any organisation, uh, that she is not technically qualified to assess. And she never has actually provided the evidence for that for her assessment. Um, and this is this is unfortunately happening across the board. Um, old professors, uh, former doctors, uh, uh, PhDs that is, uh, or readers in their subject, 
lecturers are entering management because the pay is great. Uh, the results, um, the results are not as well. The results aren't subject to peer review. You don't have to write a paper and have your your, your colleagues tear it apart before it makes it into a journal. Um, and uh, and you get to you get to go on, you get to have a have a a, a lifestyle that's more like a uh, a business, uh, a CEO of a big business, than than that of an actual academic in a, in a university. Um, you know, l lavish uh, trips abroad to do investigation, for example, into how other uh, institutions work and, and what, how you might increase the profitability of the university, etc., etc. So, um, and that, I suppose, you could also put under the tally of corruption, I, I would argue. If you're turning your back on the reason for learning and you're simply uh, ag aggrandizing yourself, increasing your bank your bank uh balance and um seeing university as something to be sold con constantly sold to to fresh clients in some sort of meat grinder um then i think you've gone down the wrong path personally uh i found your warriors they're alive i don't think that was a rant i think that was an extended explanation i think you know we cannot offer you much but I hope this will aid you. Maybe I should, maybe I should uh, turn that into its own little video at some point. Infiltrator. What did I just pick up? I'm a germ. I'm a germ. Where's the campfire? It helps clarify. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, but presumably, you, you might you might have seen on the Facebook page uh, over the weekend. It started um, as as a colleague said. This isn't Andy. Someone else said to me. Um, uh, it was kicking off. Um, Andy described it as being ugly, um, and some other people are saying that. Um, but the problem is, this, this is the time of year when when we're going to be hearing about this as well because if you think about it the teaching for the most part is done lots of universities are entering their exam period and the assessment is that well so forgive the pun um uh the calculation is that uh you, you've now got six months or whatever uh between three and six months to make your changes as a fait accompli there's no, you know, you, 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 you haven't announced this at the beginning of, of the academic year. Make, announce your changes. Um, fulfill your obligations to students who've already paid for a course or for their part of an end of department that's about to be shut down. Um, and, uh, and severely limit the amount of time that, that University College Union uh, and other local interested bodies from, the, from university to university have to counter you know, just frankly, everything from protesting through to formal, um, you know, form filling, documentary, you no, know, document, yeah, documentary, uh, um, uh, evidence gathering and, um, and providing, you're shrinking that window as a manager so that your, your desired changes are, are more likely to go through. So, um, yeah, this is the time of year when we're more likely we're going to hear about more. Basically, we're going to hear about we already are hearing about. Um, I can't remember if we discussed this in watching brief or we're going to be doing it possibly next week. Um, some universities where uh, arts courses have been actively told f since last year to cease uh, recruitment, which is obviously counter to the business model. But that's in order to set them up for for this sort of. Um, smashing of the department, basically, uh, of a department. And if it can happen to art and history, of course, we've already seen it happening to archaeology. I think it's something that archaeologists should be paying attention to. But I don't want to be bullying them, of course. I don't want to, you know, risk asking our leaders to do something in a way that might, they might see as being bullying. So we need to be very careful and to suggest that they might want to, to be supportive of, uh, for example, history departments, you know. Um, Ooh, instincts. Survival instincts shows nearby relics, documents, monoliths, 
uh, and strong boxes. Even through solid walls, crypt entrances are revealed on the map. Excellent. I think I needed that. I needed that. Let's, get, let's take a look at the map. I think there's, I think there's more there now. Oh, he says very high pitch. Also, after we finish the story, there's uh, Baba Yaga. There's the DLC, um, which is this hallucinatory trip into uh, this whole other valley all the way. Where is it? There? No, no, that's where I am. It takes you off the map, basically, into this, this crazy place where we see a house walking on chicken legs. So we're going to have to play that as well before we move on to the third game. Um, I've seen this going on for the past year uh, there, and since I'm in a doctorate program but just interested in the labour market, I don't see the details in the rat race. Um, it just seems unfortunate and antith antithetical to the idea of higher education. Just wasn't sure where the push was coming from to cull all these programs. And the answer is it's coming it's coming from multiple sources, but broadly speaking, it's coming from a zeitgeist. Um, and a zeitgeist that's, that's led by uh, by greed, by corruption, by uh, self-aggrandizement, and by, uh, by a, 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 broadly speaking, populist, utilitarian approach to education. Education is there to increase increase the nation's wealth, not necessarily to improve the nation's um, awareness, mental health and well-being. Um, yeah. And yeah, I would say the two go hand in hand. Surely we all benefit from people being happier, being able to be more productive, having great ideas. You know, isn't that a free market ideal that people get to have a, a fair shot at having a great idea, taking it to market? You know, or, uh, or indeed taking it to the market of ideas, or taking it to the... Anyway, I'm, I'm, now I am renting. Um, the thing is, you know, uh, there's also lots of evidence that green spaces, historical spaces, etc. In term, if you monetize, if you turn it into a calculation about money, bring an awful lot to the economy, well, an awful lot to the economy. But that's not. First of all, it's not an argument that lots of archaeologists are very good at making. When they do make it, they tend to make it in a counter um, cart before the horse kind of way. They tend to say, "We're not, we're not stopping you from doing development. We're not, you know, we're not, uh, we're not the, we're not, the, we're not the dour anti-progress types that you think we are." Uh, as opposed to making positive cases and cases linked, for example, with environmental um, awareness and and even activism. God forbid. Um, Okay, rant over. <laughs> uh, I like the idea of the little guy bullying the big cheese. Yeah, well, big cheeses apparently, and um, big cheeses who uh, who love to block people on Twitter. It's quite sad. Right, guys, uh, it is almost half past midnight. I am going to head to bed. I'm going to continue this uh, this mopping up mission though tomorrow evening. And hopefully tomorrow, I will have uh, had a successful day of editing and I'll be on a roll heading into the rest of the week. Uh, very much looking forward oh, to seeing where tomorrow goes. But in order to get to, get to tomorrow with a clear head, I need to get to bed. Thank you guys, as, as ever, for turning up. Thanks for the cup for the conversation. Thanks for the opportunity to, to um, expand and also to have a slight rant about university stuff. And I'll uh, I'll see you guys soon. And as I say, Nolan, if I could, if I if I had to drop all of my social media, I think I would probably uh, have, to, you know, and only keep one of them. It would have to be uh, Discord. So do consider it, consider it. Uh, but at the very least, do check out those links. Yeah. And also thank you for your links. Yep. Yeah. Good night, guys. Good night, uh, Chaminar, Cylon, and uh, anyone else who is still in the in the chat or watching. It's been fun. Cheers. <laughs>